All right, we're back. We got a uh, soil mix mixed up here, and I want to kind of go over what's in it, and I want to also tell you, don't get too attached to what I've done. I used what I had, what was available, and I kind of just felt it out until I got what I was looking for. But if you look at this stuff that I've mixed up, you can see this is, it's crumbly. It looks, it looks good. Like, trust yourself. That's the biggest thing I say with, with organic gardening. Trust yourself. When something looks good, it probably is. We as humans, we have an intrinsic ability in ourselves to look at something and know that it's good. And you can see how this is. Now let's talk about what's in it. Compost. Actual compost that I get in bulk. Let me uh, get through here. Um, 20 shovelfuls of this compost. And you can kind of see how this compost, like if I see how that sticks together. See, so this is what I started out with. If I used raw compost, that I have this. Okay, so I did 20 shovelfuls of that. Let's go back and look at what I've got. See that? And it's bone dry. It will, uh, it will change. And you know the combo is actually a little bit wet, but some of the other things gonna have absorbed some of that water, and that's great for a wicking bed. All right, I also have five scoops of this stuff. This was some compost I bought over a year ago, and it ain't compost. I got it at Home Depot. It comes in this bag, this blue lettering on it. Uh, happy Grow, whatever. You know what this is? It's really, really fine chip mulch. I needed some compost, and I didn't need to buy a whole truckload at the time, so I grabbed a few bags of this stuff. And when I saw what it was, I'm like, okay, I have a use for it, but this is not, this is not compost. Come on, guys, that's not compost. See how light that is? It makes a beautiful... Uh, amendment to a mulch. So five of those. Coarse perlite. That's this stuff here. Cur coarse perlite. I did uh, five scoops of coarse perlite. Then of course, we're gonna have to go far around because I didn't prepare for this right. Expanded shale. The stuff that I used for the uh, barrier. Again, this is kind of like a puff shale product. You can see how it holds. If I get down here where it's it holds water. It's used as a soil amendment all the time. That's actually what this is for. This is why people buy it as a soil amendment. They spread it out on their lawns and it helps the lawn retain water better. So I did three shovelfuls of this. And I'm going to kind of talk to you when I go over to show you what lava sand looks like in case you've never seen it. About what I mean about not getting too attached to what I did. So I came up with in my head what I thought would be a ratio. I won't even tell you what it was, but I'll tell you it changed a lot as I mixed it. And as I mixed it, I was like, okay, that needs to be a little bit lighter. It needs a little bit more compost, blah, blah, blah. And I ended up with what I ended up with. If you took away the materials place that I have so close to me, a lot of this stuff wouldn't be available to me easily and economically. What might I do? I might go down to the uh, box store like Home Depot, and I might get a bag of something like uh, hardwood mulch and throw a couple of bags in a big pile and take my riding lawnmower and just run over it and just shred it up smaller. And they see all those down there? Those are oak leaves. I have a place up front where there's a huge deep pile of these live oak leaves. I might take like 10% uh, of them like that and the other 90% of them and run them over with the lawnmower and then mix them. You know, whatever, whatever you have, whatever works. But what you want is that light fluffiness. This is lava sand. This is really great and I have some because Nick Ferguson came here and he needed some for his aquariums. So he went and bought like a third of a yard, I think, or a quarter of a yard, and they gave him like a yard. And he just couldn't, he just couldn't take it all home, so he left me some. So I have this uh, kiddie pool full of it, so I might as well use it. You guys that are doing this yourself, if you're buying lava rock by the bag, you take a sifter. I got one right over here, I'll show you. Do you use two scoops? I don't know, you use whatever you have. You know, you use whatever you have. When you go to put your lava rock in, make a little sifter like this, it's just hardware clothed in a frame and sift that out, and whatever you have, you know, mix that in with your soil. In fact, right here, you see this lava sand here? Looks very similar, but it's a little bit different. This all came from when I sifted out stuff. So, you know, you use what you have. Don't get what I call parsley disease. Parsley disease is where you give somebody a recipe to make soup, and the soup calls for parsley, and have everything they need except the parsley. So, what they end up doing it's not making the soup at all because well I didn't have parsley and it called for parsley and now I can't make it you know figure something out make it work uh, you can make it work anyway uh, 
that's what's in here. We'll get back to you later with more.